Hello, welcome to St James's Church for our online worship this week. I'm not sure what kind of week you've had, what kind of day you've had so far. So let's just take a moment to be still, to be quiet. And to offer ourselves to God as we come together to worship him. Father, thank you that we can come freely to worship you. May you settle our minds and our hearts so that we can truly focus on you. We give you thanks for all that you do in our lives and we offer ourselves as worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's begin our time together with that beautiful hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Our reading today is taken from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. The Word of Life We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the Word of Life. This life was revealed and we have seen it, and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship 
is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John begins his first letter in a similar way to his gospel by reflecting on who Jesus is. The word of life, who they have seen and testify to, and the eternal life we can now share in. That's what we celebrate at Easter. And in John's letter, His first message is all about light and darkness. It may have passed you by, but there was excitement in the news and for many this week about the total eclipse. A time when the moon travels across the face of the sun. Apparently lots in America came out to watch. Unlike when it happens in the UK, it wasn't cloudy. It's an amazing phenomenon where, for a short while, the moon blocks out the sun, the light of the sun. The distances and sizes and ratios are all just right. If any of the measurements were different, it just wouldn't happen like this. It's almost like someone intended it to be part of the beauty of this natural world. In our letter from John today, he tells us that God is light, perfect light, and that there is no darkness in him, and we each can choose to walk in his light. This is what we choose in baptism, to be part of the family of God and to walk in his light. We have a baptism at St James's today. And the family and godparents will help guide the baby in that light. There's lots of symbolism within the Christian faith and within baptism. But the symbolism of light and darkness is understood worldwide. Light links with truth and what is good. And darkness can be frightening as we can't see what's around us, what's going to happen. Just think about how you feel when in a dark room and the difference that is made when we switch on a light. It's the same in our spiritual lives. We need God's light to live because we need to live by what's true rather than the lies and the nonsense we tend to make up in the darkness. The darkness of sin can block out his light. Sin gets in the way of our relationship with God and we miss what's true and real while we follow whatever noises and voices are shouting the loudest. There are countless examples at the moment of wrong directions we can take. But in John's letter, he says that we can walk in God's light. And unlike many of the offers we have around us today, This isn't a one-time offer. God's love for us and invitation to walk with him is a constant offer. So it's odd when people choose to live in darkness rather than in light. 
God knows that we will be tempted. He knows that we will stumble along our way and take lots of wrong paths. He knows that we will make lots of mistakes. But it's what Jesus came to sort out so that we could once again live in the light of God. His death on the cross and resurrection on Easter Sunday clears away the stain, the darkness of sin. And he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. As we look at Jesus, we see what that relationship with God looks like. A life that's true, compassionate, loving and very real. And he challenges those who preferred the darkness. And he challenged the darkness itself. And after that time of darkness on the cross, he rose again as the light of God cannot be overcome. So John finishes this part of his letter by reminding us that we all sin. We all have darkness in our lives and things we hope to stay hidden. We each know how we can deny our sin. We blame others. We justify ourselves. We even claim that what we do isn't wrong. We're all very good at finding excuses. We hear every day of people justifying wrong and sometimes in huge ways. Water companies, political parties, global leaders, etc, etc. We are very quick to point them out. But maybe we are less keen to admit to our own. The good news is that if we admit to our sin, as we call out the darkness in our own lives, God is faithful and forgives and cleanses us. He makes us clean and gives us a new start. The slate is wiped clean. He shines his light, truth and forgiveness on us so that we can live in the right way, in the way of light. As we come together in a time of confession, let's remember that verse from 1 John 1. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, we name our sin before you today. The darkness that colours our lives and the lies we choose to believe. We confess the wrong we have done and the good we have turned away from. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and cleanse us that we may walk in the light of your truth and demonstrate your love in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we receive God's forgiveness and with thankfulness, in our hearts. We'll sing together. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. 
For I know I always can trust you Father I place into your hands My friends and family Father I place into your hands The things that trouble me Father I place into your hands The person I would be We love to hear your voice Father, we love to see your praise And in your name rejoice Father, we love to walk with you And in your presence rest For we know we always can trust you Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do Father, I want to speak the words That you are speaking to Father, I want to love the ones That you will draw to you For I know That I am one with you For I know That I am one with you Let's continue to place things in the Father's hands through our prayers for the world. Lord, shine the light of your love into our dark world. For the places of oppression, hunger and lack. for the agencies working to bring relief and to take your light into the darkness. Would you shine the light of your truth into the places where misinformation, deception and lies manipulate people and cause hurt and upset. May you shine the light of your compassion for those awaiting medical and mental health treatment, those in hospital or sick at home, those with long-term conditions and difficult diagnoses, and Lord, for those who care for them. Lord, would you shine the light of your peace into those places of conflict, particularly the escalation of trouble in the Middle East, in the Ukraine and relations between Russia, China and the West and for civilians caught up in the violence. And Lord, we ask you to shine your light into those lives of those we love, for those on our hearts today. And together, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we draw the time together to a close, remember we are sent out in the light. So let's close with this great uh, song of worship, Christ be our light. Let the majesty of the Father be the light by which we walk, the compassion of the Son be the love by which we walk, the presence of the Spirit be the power by which we walk, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us for ever. Amen. 
So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.